But when it goes too far, we'll show you the resources available. This one, I think I've seen everything. Bam. It's the most bizarre case I've ever been associated with. A case that started in central PA, spanning multiple states. We're introducing you to the Dealers of the Dead. A sneak peek for a CBS 21 News documentary. CBS 21 News after the game starts now. Oh my, what a game it was tonight. The Super Bowl is behind us. These fans are going crazy. KC will show you the highlights soon because it was an impressive night for them. I tell you what, he's... As for Governor Shapiro, he's a competitive guy as well. He has some comments about what he thinks should happen here and in the future when it comes to Pennsylvania as well. We'll get to all of this coming your way right now. Thanks for staying up after the game. I'm Joel D. Smith. This week, I sat down with the governor to talk about his forecast for the rainy day fund, legalizing marijuana, and some impressive stats. Here we go. I got some really good numbers for you. You ready? All right, go ahead. Okay. So we've compared you, or at least FNM did, to where other governors of this century were at this point in their first term. And take a look at that. Uh oh. Approval ratings, you are number one at this exact moment. All right. They're stats, but, but they mean something. What do you think has gone well? What, what has been the secret sauce to the good start? Listen, we're working our tails off and we're showing up and we're putting forth bipartisan, common sense solutions to some of the biggest challenges that we face today. And most importantly for people, we're getting stuff done. You know, my administration, we live by three letters, GSD. And since this is a family show, I'll just say it means get stuff done. And that's the focus we bring every day. And I, I'm grateful that the good people of Pennsylvania, seemingly on a bipartisan basis, acknowledge that hard work. And we're going to keep working hard for them. Getting the budget done has not been as smooth as that. If you look at what happened last year, went till August till you signed it, December till some of the details got figured out. What can be different this time? Look, I'm the only governor in the whole country with a divided legislature. So for us to get anything done here, we need Republican and Democratic votes. And in these hyper-polarized times, I don't even tell you that, you know, bringing folks together is a challenge. I'm very, very open to ideas on, ideas on the other side. I understand we gotta compromise. Compromise is not a bad thing. So I was here for your budget, listened to the whole thing, caught some good numbers from you. You said, if you give me everything here, we'll still have $11 billion left over in the rainy day. Fund. You were paying attention. Yeah. Then you come into another room and they tell you, it's rainbows and unicorns, that's not true. We have our own numbers here and it says it's impossible. It's tough for voters to know who's right and wrong when smart people are looking at the same issues and coming up with drastically different numbers. What's the deal here? Well, look, I, I get, first off, you gotta take the theatrics out of it, right? I get that there's some people in this building who are just gonna oppose everything I stand for because I'm of the other party. So put the gamesmanship aside. I'm the only person who's governor. This isn't unique to me, every governor has to do this has to put forth a five-year budget plan. You'll see in that five-year budget plan, um, taxes get cut, they don't go up. You'll see a reserve. Are you counting on revenues um, for some new pieces as well to, to kind of fill the hole in some of those things, like maybe marijuana, uh, maybe skill gain? Um, we are counting things. on that revenue. And yeah. look, it's time to compete on marijuana. Every state around us has legalized it. I recognize that that issue requires some evolution for folks. The way I see it now is, this is a matter of competition. We got to compete with other states. You're 15 months into this job, maybe 14, something like that. 12 or so. I'm rounding up. Okay. All right. <laughs> what surprised you the most? You, you've seen this this position. You knew about it, but actually sit in that seat. I'm surprised at, at how humble I feel every day. Hmm. Truly, I mean, it is the greatest honor. I'm humbled by the real challenges that we face. Um, and I'm humbled every day when I see the goodness of the people of Pennsylvania um, who are trusting me to you know, get it done for them, make their lives just a little bit better. And um, I'm not sure that's an emotion I fully expected. I'm not sure you know what to expect. Yeah. Um, but I, I couldn't be more humbled and, and proud to be the 48th governor of, of the great, the greatest <laughs> Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. All right, we told you about how he's been graded so far. What do you think about this? What grade would you give the governor into his first term, like we said, about 12 months in, you can take part in this poll right now by scanning that QR code on your screen. And right about now, most folks giving him an A at 58%. We also got the Republican response to this budget and to that interview. Lancaster County Senator Scott Martin says the governor is nowhere near Republicans when it comes to the numbers to just start this budget process. 
In particular, we asked him about the rainy day fund. How can both sides have completely different outlooks and numbers? I honestly can say they're using fuzzy math. Um, I think they're trying to justify their spending. They also, as you rightfully asked him in that interview, they're not even booking expenditures at the same levels in the out years. So that's how they're saying they're able to balance this out and have billions in the rainy day fund. We have the full interviews with the governor and Senator Martin. You can find them at CBS21.com. And stick around in just a bit. We're asking the governor who he thinks will be in next year's Super Bowl and quite the idea uh, for what should happen over at Penn State. Stick around. As for this year's Super Bowl, what a thriller we have. Let's get to the highlights. San Francisco look, looking to take a 10-0 lead with this trick play. Over to Juwan Jennings, back across the field. That's Christian McCaffrey. He's got clear sail on the rest of the way. 10-0. 49ers looking good. Kyle Shanahan said, this is my year. We went to overtime. Brock Purdy looking for seven. They're going to have to settle for three. And look at his face. I think he knows what's happening next. It is Patrick Mahomes' time. And he was amazing. Running the ball when he needed to. And then for the win, Taylor Swift holding her breath, as many are. He rolls right and finds Nicole Hardman in the end zone. That's a touchdown. And that means the Chiefs win a thriller in overtime. Back-to-back, -back, third and four years after the game, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey with a moment here. Maybe she's going to write some uh, new lyrics to this in the future. Who knows? Now she has to get back on tour real quick. As for casinos, online gambling, you know, it can be as easy as just open up your phone, a few taps, and there you go. You're in the action. Earlier tonight, Maxine Rose talked to some local gamblers. Also an expert about the impact gambling can have negatively as well and what to do if you're having problems. Hey guys, I'm here with Angela, who says she put down one bet for the Super Bowl tonight. Angela, can you tell us how much money would you get if you were to win that bet? I would win with 370 for a straight up win. 370 for a straight up win. That is a lot of money. And that's also why it can be so addicting. When you don't get invited to someone else's party, you have to make the party. Dino Ciccioni is feeling lucky. He's got $100 riding on the Super Bowl. Cicioni says gambling for the big game is one thing, but he recognizes it can be addictive. It's almost like being an alcoholic. You know, when do you stop? While experts say only 1% to 2% of the U.S. population will struggle with problem gambling, the impact can be destructive if gone unchecked. It can be kept quieter because it's right on the screen of your phone. Take your pick. I mean, there's so many platforms with it right now, I wouldn't even be able to state how many there are. And it can make it easier for people to chase those losses, which is why in PA, online operators must give players the option to set limits and sign themselves up for self-exclusion programs something Merle Andrulis has taken advantage of. It's very easy to get an uh, accountability if you want to bet every day. You notice that it's just not fun anymore. That is when you need to take a take a deeper dive and, and take a step back and look at your behavior and, and look to see, you know, is gambling a safe activity for me? Nearly 68 million Americans plan to bet on this year's Super Bowl research shows. If you don't bet, you can't win. And I want you to remember this number for those of you at home. It's 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-GAMBLER. For those of you who think you might need some extra help in Harrisburg. Maxine Rose, CBS 21 News. All right, thanks, Maxine. Let's talk weather now. We've come off this amazing stretch of weather. It was mild again yesterday, a little cooler today. Let's go ahead and show you what we got today. We're in the 40s as you look around. That's still very mild as we look at uh, February. Let me show you what's coming our way. We had this cloud cover today and even a few sprinkles. That's the green that you see here. Everything moving off to the east. That gets out of here, but watch what happens tomorrow. Increasing cloud cover during the day, quiet weather during the day, but here comes rain at night. First rain, that's the green. Now watch what happens overnight. We turn much colder and we quickly turn to snow. So this is Monday night into Tuesday. We get accumulating slushy snow here early on Tuesday. So we're looking at a coating to maybe two inches in spots. So it'll be much more snow well off to the north as you get up towards Williamsport and over towards the Poconos. That's where we get three to five or even more. Here's your snow timetable. So Monday night, some rain moves in. Just plain rain tomorrow evening. 
overnight while you're sleeping that rain changes to snow and by tuesday morning that snow is wrapping up as a coating to maybe two inches slushy accumulation. We'll look further and take a little closer look coming up with the seven day in just a few minutes. Joel D, we'll send it back over to you. Take a look at your screen, everybody. There's a car that crashed into the side of a home in Lebanon County, all the way up to the passenger side door there. Just will say this happened uh, yesterday overnight around 2 a.m. just off route 934. One person was hurt, four people had to leave that home, the Red Cross now helping those folks who were displaced. Three people in the hospital after an apartment fire in Lancaster County. This is a fire that broke out at 3 a.m. on West Lemon Street. More people displaced there, not yet known how many may have lost their homes in general, but the Red Cross says they're helping at least five people who were out of their homes as four of them were impacted, four apartments. Honoring a young boy from Lebanon County by going the distance. We'll tell you our community in Anvil is certainly coming together to raise awareness about child abuse. Plus, you've been waiting for this, so have we. Buying and selling body parts, a whole industry has cropped up, and our CBS 21 team has been working very hard to take you inside this story. Our documentary, The Dealers of the Dead, a sneak peek coming your way next. It's time to take control of your next adventure in a new... ...during a 5K run walk today. The event is to honor a 12-year-old boy from Anvil, Max Schallenberger, who died in 2020 after suffering from years of child abuse and neglect. His death rocking the community at that time and ever since locals have been continuing to try to raise more awareness and encourage others to take a step in the right direction the community as a whole feels a connection to this story because unfortunately it was right under our nose and nobody knew about it until it was too late so i think we all take have a sense of ownership over what happened and now we just want to honor him and really preserve his memory and have some fun as well it's like an 80s theme for this run today Organizers say they've raised about $23,000 since this event started four years ago. That money goes towards supporting the UPMC Child Advocacy Center of Central PA. And heads up, winter is back this week. As a matter of fact, that includes some snow. Take a look as it spreads through the Appalachians into Central PA and beyond. We've got your scoop in the first morning forecast next. Book your staycation at the Fulton Interstate Investigation. It also opened our eyes to the legal world of oddities, the buying and selling of body parts. For months, we've been investigating this world and the multiple criminal cases that have popped up. So now we present to you a trailer of our CBS 21 documentary, Dealers of the Dead, Inside the Body Parts Business. My name is Amber Hagster. Janine Cunningham. So how'd you get involved in all of this? My father was uh, one of the potential victims uh, from Harvard. Was my mom's skin made into buttons? This is like shades of a horror movie. Just when I think I've seen everything, bam. It's the most bizarre case I've ever been associated with. I don't believe that there's a system in place where an individual can say, I would like my body to become a decorative piece. Do you have anything to say about the charges that you're facing right now? Candace Chapman Scott is accused of selling stolen bodies belong to the University of Arkansas for medical science. Prosecutors outlining a nationwide network of people buying and selling human remains stolen from Harvard. Medical school. They said we confiscated five five-gallon buckets of body parts. Criminals were apparently, you know, walking through the morgue like it was a flea market. It's disgusting. And so now I have to constantly think, is my mom's head on someone's mantle? He has, he's destroyed me, absolutely destroyed me. In certain circumstances, it's legal. In the U.S., there's no federal regulation. So my particular business, we do mostly human bones. Holly has been in the business of buying and selling oddities on Facebook for years. It's the same thing as a drug dealer on the street. There's a hidden market of things that I wouldn't have expected there to be. What are you doing with body parts? We're going to have to wait and see. There might be more to this story. And now, CBS 21 News First Warning Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell. 
Hey, thanks so much for staying up late with us here at CBS 21. And I do mean late. Hope you enjoyed the game and uh, staying up with us. We sure appreciate it. Let's show you some temperatures. Interesting map here. Uh, basically kind of split in two because where the skies are clear, it's colder here in the northern part of the state. Here in the southeast part of the state, it's much warmer. You can see 40s and some 30s. That's because the clouds have kind of held a little bit uh, longer there. So, yeah, chilly night, but not too bad. We do have a winter weather advisory to tell you about. That's all the county shaded in blue. And this is for uh, Tuesday morning. So basically tomorrow night into Tuesday. This is what we call a winter storm warning. More snow as you work your way north of I-80. There's Williamsport over towards Scranton. You get the idea. Now, where's our storm? It's way out here in Oklahoma, portions of Texas, and working its way eastward. So that's where it is tonight. And it's going to be on our doorstep about this time tomorrow night. That's when we get into it. So what we see first is we see rain. So as we see uh, going through the day tomorrow, not bad, you'll get a little bit of sunshine. Then the clouds will take over as the day goes on. Now watch what happens. Tomorrow evening, it starts as rain showers. So 8, 9 o'clock, we're seeing some rain. 10, 11 o'clock, even as you're heading off the bed, it's still rain. But cold air is rushing in. Watch what happens right here, turning into snow overnight while you're sleeping. So watch, this is about 3.30, 4 in the morning, and then it becomes all snow. This is when we have a chance to accumulate that snow right when you're heading out the door Tuesday morning, 7.30. So this is going to affect your commute, school times, all that kind of stuff. And notice that it extends well up into New York and Connecticut. It wraps up fairly quickly. It's finished by mid-morning, 9, 10 o'clock for most of us, and it's out of here. And in its wake, we get this strong northwesterly flow. It turns colder, it turns windy as we work our way through the day. So how much snow? Generally a coating to an inch is all we're gonna see because we're so warm, right? It's gonna take a, a lot for some of this stuff to stick. But we are looking at a slushy accumulation as you get up past uh, maybe Lewistown to State College, three to five inches. And as we showed you more as you work your way up to Williamsport and the Poconos. So this is what Tuesday morning looks like by 4 a.m. It's all snow. So we're dealing with snow till about nine o'clock and then it starts to taper off. But you're looking at a very messy commute on Tuesday morning. In the meantime, just some clouds tonight. Overnight lows, <coughs> excuse me, kind of chilly down to 36 for the overnight low. And then here is your seven day forecast as we have a quiet day tomorrow. It's still very mild, 50. And then we watch that rain change to snow overnight. Tuesday, therefore, a CBS 21 weather watch day. 40 for the high as we get on the back side of that, it's breezy and turning colder. The high on Wednesday, only 38. And then we stay right around that 40 degree mark for the better part of the week. 40s during the day and 20s at night. You know why, Jill D? Because winter is back, my friend. We've had that. It never left for real. It, well, not for real, but it did take a break. Yeah. So we've been vacation. so mild. But uh, yeah, watching out for a messy winter storm Monday night into Tuesday. Okay. Thank you, sir. You got it. So there's a shooter that was killed and a child injured after some gunfire rang out at the celebrity pastor Joel Osteen's church. This happened today. The police chief in Houston says two off-duty officers shot and killed a woman who started shooting inside of this church. Now he says the suspect was accompanied by a child who was hit during all this gunfire. That child now in critical condition. A 57-year-old man nearby was also shot in the leg. The police chief now vowing to step up patrols at places of worship. Police say the shooting happened in between the services at that place. About 45,000 people attend weekly services there, making it the third largest mega church in the U.S. So earlier you heard some comments from the governor, his plans for the future of the state, but he also has some athletic ideas, some interesting plans. Also, stopping crime, legalizing marijuana, you heard that, but I want to get to the stuff that's the sports stuff. You'll be surprised what he wants to put here when we come back. Get near.